Hi, I'm going to show you how I use the warp tool in free transform in Photoshop to solve issues I could not do if I didn't have this tool. Hi, I'm Joel Grimes. I am a commercial advertising photographer. I've been doing this a long time and I love to teach you guys things like, well, I talk about being an artist, uh, living your dream and creating an income with your camera. So I um, always come across really cool topics that I can kind of pass on to you. I was working on an image yesterday and I was using the free uh, or the warp tool in free transform. And I thought, you know what? This is a tool I could not live without and I use it all the time. So I thought, wouldn't it be great to do a little tutorial on that? So we're going to dive in. I'm going to show you how I use that. Um, I also want to let you guys know that if there's a link below in the description, That'll give you access to a free uh, sort of an ebook that I put together called the 10 steps on being a successful photographer. We have probably had more than 100,000 people download this uh, uh, little ebook and uh, it's a great, you can put it on your iPhone or iPad or carry it with you or review it. And it gives you some insights on what I think are 10 really amazing things that'll help you go and make a living with your camera. So, or be successful as a photographer. So that's available. All right, so free transform. Um, you know, we use that a lot, I think, if you are diving into uh, Photoshop. Um, but the warp tool is something that I, I, I think I probably use, um, not in every image, but um, I do use it a lot, and I'm gonna show you how I use it. Now, um, I'm gonna put one image up here that I did nah, not too long ago, but it was for a client, a client shoot, an ad campaign, and I photographed a athlete, a soccer scenario, and it was a low angle, and I had the camera on the ground, and I was shooting this uh, uh, soccer player, and I had to do it in three parts. I had to photograph his hand by itself out, hanging in the air, and then when he, I had him hang onto the light stand so that he could uh, balance himself, then I would photograph his mid torso. He's had one leg suspended in the air, and then I had to put that leg on some apple boxes and take a picture of the back leg suspended in the air. So, three parts. Then I had to merge those all together. And so you're taking uh, three shots, an arm and leg, whatever. And if I didn't have the warp tool in, in, uh, in free transform, there's no way I can line those up. So that's one scenario. I probably got uh, hundreds of scenarios that I could show you where I've used the warp tool. I'm going to show you one now that I did yesterday. It's a still life, kind of a still life a shot. And um, it uh, would not be possible to solve these problems without that tool. So let's dive in. Let me show you. Uh, let's go over here and I'm going to show you the image that I finished. This is a, an agave um, that was uh, perched in a window in uh, Peru and it had a black background and I added the texture. So I'm gonna show you um, the layers to that. So let's go over here. Um, there's a, a photo uh, warming, just a little sepia, um, black and white, cause that converted the color, the textures were color. Um, a little levels to just darken, cause I really like the light version of that. Um, let's go back to black and white. I kinda like that, but I thought, well maybe it's just a little too light. So I added a little darker uh, uh, adjustment levels there. There's the agave. And then the texture, um, I used three different textures to uh, build that out. So um, there you go. There's the final image. But let me show you where I started, which um, will uh, sort of give you an idea of what I had to work with. So there, this is, this is the image I shot uh, backed up. And so I was on the streets of Peru walking in, um, uh, let's see, the town is called Arequipa. Arequipa, I believe that's... Um, um, I was there actually on a client shoot, but had a day off and I was walking the streets. So, um, uh, this was shot with a 24 millimeter, but this final image here was shot with a 70 millimeter. And I might have gotten, I don't know if I've gotten a little higher, I, I can't remember, uh, it's been a while. But, let me go over to Bridge, and I'm going to show you... Here's my bracketed set of images, which created this image right here. So you can see that I'm missing a bunch of parts here. I got some, uh, some flaws there in the agave leaves. Um, and so I want to build out those leaves. I don't have the, well, it wasn't there. Um, and plus there's some flaws that I want to fix. So I'm going to show you how I go into the 
uh, Photoshop with a warp tool to bring back all these leaves perfectly. All right, so I'm cheating, um, which is okay because uh, a photograph is a representation of an artistic vision that I have. Um, and to me, every photograph is, min if, you, if you take a choice of lenses, you make a choice of what lens to put on, you're manipulating the photograph. So every photograph is manipulated. So we're gonna open up this and it's gonna bring it over here into Photoshop and we're gonna dive in. And I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna fix every single leaf that would take too long, but I wanna show you the basics of how I would solve this and uh, get to this end result that I can take this image, make a gorgeous print and put it in a gallery or put it on my wall uh, you know, who knows? So let's go back to here. All right, we're gonna go down a little bit on the um, size here so you can see it. So I've gotta increase my canvas. That's the very first thing I'm gonna do. So we're gonna go over here to canvas size. Uh, we're gonna take the width and let's go to 26. I think that's what I did before. All right, that's pretty wide, maybe more wider than I need. We're gonna get a little more uh, on the top. So we go to the canvas again and we're gonna click the, the bottom arrow so the anchor's on the bottom. And we're going to go, let's go to 15. Just, I don't know exactly the dimensions. I can always crop it later. All right. So that's the first step. Um, you could always make a, uh, um, a duplicate letter just in case. I don't always do that, but in case you screw it up, you go, oh my gosh, I can go back. Now, if I have a smart object when I brought it over, I usually save the smart object just in case. But so let's go over here. We're going to go black brush 100%. And I'm just going to fill in a little bit of the black here to kind of get the sense of, whoop, I went too, too quick on that. Let's just, I'm doing that. It's early in the morning and I'm, I didn't have any coffee, but I'm a little hyper. Um, I climbed the steps this morning, did my exercises uh, out here in uh, Phoenix, the west side. I can, uh, we have these steps, 350 steps. I do my exercise so i'm i'm wired i'm ready to take on the world all right so here we go we're just kind of building this around a little bit to give me a sense of um my black background which we're obviously we're gonna extract out we don't have to we could leave it black if we wanted all right so i'm just gonna go to that point right there all right now so let's start with this one first and um, I'm, I'm on the layer that I want to extract or to, to select. We go up to the lasso tool and let's see, let's just start with the simplest one right here. Okay. So I go command C, which is copy command V, which is paste. Now I got a layer above me command T, which brings me into the free transform. I can always do that over here, but I, that's the circuit I've been doing. And I always I repeat that command C, command V, command T. I do that. I don't know how many times a day. Uh, when I'm working in Photoshop. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come down here. Um, well, let's fix this one. Yeah, let's fix this one first. This has got a little a weird thing on the end there that kind of dried up. So I can't see where I'm supposed to anchor it, so I take the opacity down. And I'm going to move it around now until I get. Let's blow it up so you can see it. And we say, okay, let's see. What would be a good spot? We just want the tip of it, right? So I'm going to go... Put it right about there and then i'm going to go and control or we call right click uh, and i'm going to go to warp so now i'm set up to start pushing the image the pixels around so we're going to go um, pull it a little bit here and all i need is to have at least one point on this on this line that matches i don't have to have, to have a whole line to match but you can get as close as you can. So now we're going to bring this around. There we go. Now that moved that bottom a little bit. We'll just adjust that again. So adjust the top. We're going to blow it up a little bit more just to make sure everything looks pretty good. So now we say uh, enter. Bring our opacity back. Okay. So now let me hit F so I can move this around for you. And now we get to make a mask, which will allow me to uh, get rid of this black here because I don't want that there. And we're on 100% here, by the way. And it's just a soft brush, okay? All right, so now 
I got one point there and one point there. So I might zoom in just to make sure um, that matched looks pretty good. So we go down and then now here's the little, the little secret. So I'm back on to, um, I'm still on the mask. I go to my brush black, but I bring my opacity to say 25%, somewhere around there. And now I feather in here to bring in the smooth sort of blending of the two. So let's go click on, click off, click on, click off. So you can see where I'm, in the, I'm doing that there. So now I go Command E, which merges down because I'm done with that. I don't need that. So let's go down and take a look. Beautiful. All right, so I fixed one. So let's take and do another one. So we go over here to my lasso tool. Let's take, we're gonna fix this one here. Um, eh, let's try a different one. Let's try this one here. Command C, Command V, Command T. Now you know the, 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 the sort of the sequence here. Um, and we're gonna bring this over here. And we're going to go to opacity, just so I can see it. And this one will probably go right about there. All right, right click, hold down the, uh, uh, we'll just scroll down to warp. Let's blow it up. And we're gonna pull it in position. Whoops, outside of my thing here. Again, what I'm concerned about is this one point here and one point there, that's all I need. I'm not worried about the matching up there. All right, so we go back to full opacity, hit enter, um, make a mask, and that's right down here at the bottom of my little palette. And we now go to my black brush, go back to 100%, and we're just gonna, let's blow it up so we can see the exact spot where we're gonna blend, right? Whoop, see I went too far there, let's, let me show you. So I'm gonna hit the X key, come back, Till I get to my one point, that's all I need. Up here, it looks good. All right, then I go to uh, the 25% opacity or thereabouts, and we're going to feather this in here. Whoop, I'm, in the, I'm on the white, I gotta go to black. So I can bring that little pattern right up into here. So you cannot tell. All right, looks good. We go Command E, which merges it down. You can save all those layers, by the way. Uh, it just makes it uh, a little more complicated for me. All right, so let's do this one down here. This is a little bit of a challenge. This one goes out. And um, so let's take, oh boy, uh, which one would we use for that? Um, uh, let's try, let's try this one again. I, you know, again, there's not too many options here. Um, so Command, uh, C, Command V, Command T. We'll bring it over here. Now this is completely different, uh, you know, in terms of thickness and all that. So this will be a little more challenged. So let's curve it down a little bit here. And I can always move it around later if, I, if I'm, you know, not happy. So go to opacity, blow it up. Com uh, Command T, we're gonna hold down the control to scroll to warp. So this one's gonna be a little bit more of a challenge. So let's, let's take and push that up. And we want it in our frame over here. So let's get the bottom to come up. And we're gonna pull that down a little bit here. This is this is probably the hardest one of the whole batch. I'm just gonna keep moving it until I kind of get it. Now that one spot there, I've got one. Let's see if we can maybe fix that a little bit better there. So I have my anchor or my my contact point there, contact point there, go to 100 percent Hit enter, get my brush, oh, make a mask. Oh, I hit, did I hit enter, it didn't work there. Get a mask, get my brush. And so let's now, oh, 
Nope, I'm only on 28%. See? Let's go here. So the key to this is knowing that all I need is one anchor point or one contact point to make it look real. So let's find out if I got it right here, right there. Right about there. Okay, come down. Now we go to 28% um, or 25%. Opacity on my brush. It's a soft brush, by the way. We're on black. And we'll paint in. Now, by the way, if you hit the backslash right under the delete on my keyboard, you can see where you have, um, you know, painted on your mask. So that gives you a little reference point if you need to do that. And I didn't know that for a long time. And I was teaching a class in front of a whole bunch of people and someone said, yell that out. Normally I don't like it when people yell things out because I feel like I'm, you know, um, I'm a hack anyways. But anyways, I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. I didn't know that. All right, so we're going to feather that in right there. I could probably blow that up just a little bit. Zoom in there. But that looks pretty good, you know. Because all I got to do is sell it, sell the fake to you, right? Or the viewer. So we're going to go Command E. Let's go back to 100% on our brush. We're going to go over here. And I'm going to paint in here. And we'll paint right here. So you can kind of see what I did. Now, I'm not going to go through and do every single leaf, but I hope you get the point. Uh, with this tool, I can go and warp things into position. So if it's a fence post, so let's say you have a, like you're shooting this beautiful uh, old country road with a fence post going down, and one fence post looks terrible. Like everyone looks, everything looks good. You go, oh man. Well. You know that, oh, I can, in Photoshop, I can fix that. And I can free, free transform. I can take, say, the bigger fence post that looks good here, bring it down, warp it, match it, blend it in, and then feather it. And so then it looks like and it's, it's, it's a perfect line of beautiful fence posts going off into infinity and a little windy road. Whatever it is your scenario is. It's unlimited. And I use it all the time. And so, the, but here's where I want you guys to kind of get, this is, this is where I think it's important. Um is that when I'm out shooting like that agave sitting in the window and I look at it, I go, oh, that's gorgeous. You know what? It, oh, geez, I wish I had more. I wish the window frame wasn't touching the, and there's some broken or uh, leaves that aren't, uh, agave leaves that aren't perfect. Oh, and I just pass it up. Or I, I just say it's, I, you know, it's not what I want. But now, knowing the warp tool, knowing all that, I can in my mind think, oh, I can solve that. And I know some of you purists out there will go, oh, you know what? Uh, if you can't do it in camera, it's not a real photograph. Well, guess what? Years ago, I talk about this a lot in the Joel Grimes Academy. I, I, was, I thought I was a photographer for 30 years, and I gave up that title. I became an artist with a set of tools. And one of my tools happens to be a camera, and another tool is Photoshop. So you get my point is that I'm an artist, I'm thinking through, I think ahead, I think uh, how to solve problems. The warp tool in Free Transform is one of those tools that I could not live without. And I hope you guys learned something from this and enjoy it. Uh, subscribe if, if you wanna uh, keep in touch with what I'm doing. I'm trying to put out more videos all the time. Um, and uh, you know, it takes a little bit of effort on my part, but I wanna give you guys something uh, and I get excited when I learn something new. So. I hope you go out, create images, have fun. As I always say, be an artist, live your dream, and create an income with your camera.